We've got a wombat here. He doesn't seem to be too afraid of me. Just giving himself a nice old scratch. Man, that's so rad. Man, what a view. That is incredible. It's those big rocky pagodas right on the water's edge. That is absolutely stunning. Well, hopefully we can try and find a nice little campsite around here somewhere. And then um, tomorrow I'll sort of spend the day trying to fish these uh, rocky outcrops in the weedy banks. Man, what a view, hey. Not get much better than that. Yeah, so I'm pretty spoilt for choice in terms of a place to set up for camp. All the trees here are nicely spaced apart. Uh, the ground's relatively clear and pretty flat. And yeah, there's not too much um, understory like scrub or anything like that. So yeah, it makes putting up a, a hutch here a tarp pretty easy. But I might have a little bit more of a look around the area and just see what else I can find. Oh yep, I think we've got a winner. Have a look at this. Yeah, so we've got a nice little cave or overhang just here. She's not too big, but I think she'll do me just fine. Yeah, so she's not massive, but she's got a big enough overhang that she'll keep me nice and dry. And she's got a nice level ground as well, so we'll be able to chuck the bivy down on that and uh, have a good night's sleep. It also looks like someone's had a fire in here previously. It's a little charcoal that left over, so yeah, it looks like I'm not the first person to sleep up here. A few things to note about sleeping in caves and overhangs. Always check for sort of fault lines in the rock. So I've had a good look around here and there sort of aren't sort of too many fault lines or any that look real dangerous. If you come have a look on the outside of the rock, Yeah, she's just one big slab, so if she had sort of like maybe a fault line going up somewhere, then I'd probably be a bit sketchy, but uh, she seems like she's pretty solid, so yeah, I think she'll do. Yeah, so, like I said, not the biggest cave in the world. I uh, don't think I want to be standing up in here, but I think she'll do me just fine for this weekend. Be able to sort of put the bivy out behind me, have the fire sort of in front of me, and still have plenty of room to sit around and stay under cover. Uh, just a few other things to note about sort of sleeping in caves and overhangs. If they do have any cracks in them, and say if it does rain, or even get down to freezing temperatures throughout the night, that water's going to get inside those cracks and if it does freeze it will sort of um, expand and then crack the rock so you just got to sort of have your wits about you um, just be careful of things like that because it can definitely collapse on you so even sometimes having a fire sort of inside a cave if it does get really cold outside of the cave the heat differences between inside and outside that'll also cause you some issues so yeah you just got to um, just be careful about those kinds of things also another thing to note when sort of having a look at a cave to sleep in just make sure that it's not an Aboriginal cave. Just have a look around the walls to see if there's any drawings or paintings and around the floors to see if there's any sort of um, artifacts like stone fragments or shell middens or anything like that. Because we really want to try and yeah, protect those sites. Um, they're pretty sacred and they tell a lot, of, uh, a lot about our history. So we want to try and keep those things protected. So just have a, have a quick look around and just make sure that it's um, yeah, not an Aboriginal cave. I think this one would do me just fine tonight. So yeah, let's get the bivy up. Yeah, I think before I get the bivy out, I might just do a little bit of house cleaning. Just sort of sweep the area, tidy it up a little bit, even get the fire pit sort of set up. And then um, I'll chuck the bivy out after that.
Yeah, so I'm thinking for the fire, I might have it on top of this rock here. So I'm just going to get a few more rocks and just stack them around the edge and make a little fire pit. Yeah, I think that should do. Should be able to sort of reflect a little bit of heat back into this cave with the, the big rock behind it. So let's go grab some firewood now. So I've just got a ground sheet, I'm just going to chuck out on the ground. And I've also got my um, Outdoor Research Helium Bivy. Really rate this, eh? I've used it a couple of times already. It's just nice, it's, um, it's a lightweight, packs down pretty small, and um, it's just good to have that sort of peace of mind, just so you know you're not going to get any creepy crawlies bunking up with you throughout the night. Because um, yeah, sleeping in caves like this, you tend to get spiders sort of running around. So yeah, just that peace of mind. Anyway, let's get that set up. And then I've just got a Nemo Astra Air inflatable mat, so I'll just tuck that inside now as well. Yeah, sweet. So that should do me for tonight. Probably got about 20 minutes until it gets dark, so I um, might grab a few beers and then go watch the sunset. such a long day. It took about a five hour drive and about a two hour hike. When you get rewarded with arvos like this, it's all worth the day. Man, this is such a nice afternoon. 
not, I'm so stoked with this campsite, eh? I locked out so hard with this. This is a beautiful, beautiful campsite. Oh man, I love this stuff, eh? I've just got some paper bike here. Just try and break up a little bit, just so it's easier to catch. Sometimes I find paper bark does not catch that easily, eh, as you think it would. I much prefer stringy bark now. Come on. Oh, about bloody time. about one degree tonight so not too bad pretty chilly but not too bad not as bad as compared to some of you guys overseas where it gets down to minus five and minus ten <laughs> one degrees in the middle of winter can't complain with that eh? <laughs> got it pretty good around here but man so so stoked with this little cave slash overhang could not be happier it's always a bit of a gamble when you sort of do this kind of camping you never like i've never been to this place before so you're never quite sure what to expect um like i was thinking i was just going to do the standard uh hoochie tarp with a bivy underneath me but yeah to stumble across a little overhang like this could not be happier and so i've been wanting to camp in the cave for a while so yeah glad it kind of worked out this trip like just before i had the camera off with the light off and i was just sort of sitting back in the bush there just looking back on um on the cave and with the fire going, sort of lighting up all of the walls, like the rock walls, and then the stars above me. Man, it's insane, like it's such a clear night. You've got the Southern Cross right above me and <laughs> such a cool sight, eh? It's a, uh, yeah, pretty stoked on how it turned out. Um, anyway, I think it's probably time to get some dinner going. I've got a bangers and mash tonight. Well, I've actually kanga bangers and mash. So kangaroo sausages, and I've got some, yeah, potato I'm gonna cook up and try and mash that up. And I've just got some veggies as well, like some green beans and some broccolini. So, yeah, it should be a good little dinner. So, let's get the potato on because that'll probably take a little bit of time to cook. All right, so in the taco bag tonight, get some butter out, some olive oil, fry up some onion as well. Got the potato, um, yeah, kanga bangers, and just some veggies. So, and yeah, so just in the front of here, I keep some alfoil. So I'll wrap up the potato in that. Uh, I also had a few guys in the last video sort of ask me what pouch I use. This is a VanQuest. I think the particular model is called a Husky. But yeah, the brand's called VanQuest. I absolutely love this thing, eh? Like, it just keeps all my stuff nice and organized. Especially when I've got all my camera batteries and chargers and power banks and stuff like that. Just keeps everything in one place, which is really handy. So yeah, definitely worth it. Um, yeah, check them out if you want something like this. Alright, well I've finished my beer, so I think it's time for a gin. Got some gin and tonic already mixed up in this bottle. All right, let's dice up some onion. I'm sure a lot of you are thinking right now, will you stop using that knife on that metal plate? <laughs> um, yes, I've taken all your advice and I will eventually get uh, probably a nice little 
thin plastic chopping board that I can cut out to shape and slot inside this um yeah, inside this plate. So I haven't listened to you guys, I just haven't gotten around to doing it yet. So bear with me. Tomorrow if I have time, um, actually I will have time tomorrow. I might, might even try and get some bark off a tree or um, just find some bark on the ground and make a little chopping board out of that. And to go with that, I've just got some, some veggies as well. Oh, that's right, I don't have broccolini. I've got um, asparagus and green beans. I've also got some chives from the garden at home to put, um, yeah, put in the mashed potato as well. Getting a little bit fancy tonight. Dead set. I need a bigger fry pan, eh? This is slightly too small. I just need it to be like, I don't know, an inch bigger or so. Make my life a whole lot easier. Drizzle on some oil. And chuck that in the fire. Yeah, then we just got the kanga bangers. I'll just chuck that next to the pan here. Yeah, that's a good thing about um, these Olsen Goods titanium grills is they're quite a decent size, which is good, so I can manage to fit the pan on as well as the meat. Whereas the other grill I had, uh, or still have, I'd, it's just a little bit smaller, so you can't you can't really do this. It's only probably big enough just to cook the meat alone. Whereas this you can sort of uh, yeah, double up, which is good. Well, I think that's about done, and yeah, I think these snags are done as well, so let's chuck them in there. And set that off. Just got to get the potato right now. Alright, well this potato has been in for quite a while now, so it should be done. Oh man, this is starting to look pretty good, eh? Let's see how this potato went. Feels pretty cooked, feels pretty soft. A little bit crunchy, but I think she will do. Let's just break her open. Oh yeah, she is well and truly cooked. We just get some of these chives that I got from home. You know what? Instead of mashing this up, I think I'm just going to do a little baked potato. So I'm just going to put the butter in there with the chives. And I think we'll call it good. Right, I'll we'll just sprinkle some of the chives on. So there you go, bush style bangers and mash. This looks absolutely incredible, so I'm so keen to dig in. Oh yeah, that is the stuff. Oh man, that potato, that is so good. It'll maybe do with a little bit of salt, but otherwise, oh, so good. Oh man, I'm loving this, eh? Man, so good, eh? Seems like every dinner I'm making these days is just like the bee's knees, eh? Cannot seem to do wrong. Oh man, so good. All right, well, I think we might leave there for tonight. Gonna try and get up nice and early in the morning and go for a good fish. 
probably going to try and spend most of the day tomorrow fishing, to be honest. Might go for a little bit of a wander around here, but yeah, my main priority tomorrow is to try and catch a fish. <laughs> From what I hear, this particular river um, stocks some good fish, so yeah, fingers crossed with any luck I can actually get one in, but after all, it is me we're talking about, and um, I don't seem to have the best luck with fishing, so we'll try not to get our hopes up, but fingers crossed, the, um, yeah, the fishing gods are looking down on me, so but yeah, anyway, I'll um, catch you guys in the morning.
think they're about done. Because I don't have another plate, I'm just going to chuck these on the mushroom bag while I'll cook up an egg. Which is a bit crispy. Oh, yep, yeah, I think she's done. She's just got some cupy mayonnaise. If you're wondering where to find these little packets of cupy, um, I just get them from the sushi chain. They usually come around on the belt and you just, yeah, just grab a few extra. Some of the mushrooms. Forgot the rocket this time, so I'll have to do without. And the halloumi. And the egg. <laughs> Bit of a small egg, but uh, it'll do. And then just to top it off. Alright, let's get stuck into it. Just make up some hot chocolate as well. Although I think I might have it cold this morning, so I'll call it cold chocolate. Just got some powdered milk in here as well. Thought I might jazz up the water with a bit of powdered milk. Doesn't quite mix so well when it's uh, not boiled water. Kind of just all floats to the top, but should be right. All right, let's give this a go. Let's see if it's as good as last time. She's a little bit crispier. <laughs> Definitely, um, yeah, could have taken off the coals a little bit earlier. Yeah, definitely got a bit of a crunch to it. But man, still pretty good, eh? Man, it's such a nice winter's day today. There's not a cloud in the sky, hey? It's just a really nice, fresh day. Um, it's pretty chilly last night, eh? Like, I woke up a fair few times, and <laughs> I kept thinking, like waking up, thinking surely the sun's got to get up, and I probably did that about five different times. So, yeah, because the sun's getting up about seven o'clock now. Yeah, and it goes down about five, so we've got yeah, a good sort of what, 13, 14 hours of dark. Um, but yeah, it's just it's pretty pretty body cold this morning, and then once I got up um, and started walking around, my fingertips were freezing. Hey, I need to get some like little gloves or something for future. But, um, but yeah, it's a really nice morning, but there's a because this because this cave kind of faces north, you kind of get the nice morning sun, which is uh, which is good to sort of warm up. It's not very good for filming because you get some pretty harsh shadows cast in um into the cave. But yeah, in terms of uh, temperature, it's actually quite nice to sit in here and warm up in the w like winter sun. I don't know if uh, I'd really sort of want to camp in here in summer. I think it'd be pretty hot in summer, trying to sort of cook breakfast and having the the summer heat on you. Yeah, I don't think it'd be um, yeah, too good. But yeah, last night, after I turned off the camera, um, I just, oh, it was such an incredible night. It was probably one of the best nights I've had camping in a very long time, eh? It was just one of those nights you just sort of remember for a long time. Like, I just sort of stood away from the fire, uh, just sort of put on some nice little music. Um, yeah, just stood away from the fire and just watching the the light from the fire just light up the cave and then the stars last night were incredible. Oh man, you just see the whole Milky Way, eh? Like the sun of the cross was like just above me, like above the cave and it's pretty special, eh? I was just sort of standing away in the darkness for about, probably about half an hour just yeah, enjoying my gin and just sort of taking in the serenity and man, it's sort of like moments like that, just yeah, that's why I like um, doing this kind of stuff, it's just 
blows you away, hey. Uh, I really wish I could have uh, filmed it, but my camera is shocking at night time, so they wouldn't have picked up any of the stars or anything like that. So, but man, absolutely incredible night. Anyway, I'm just going to finish this off, and then um, I'll probably get the rod up, uh, so the rod out pretty soon, and set that up and go for a bit of a fish. So, fingers crossed we can catch something today. in I uh, managed to get the lure snagged in the reeds behind me so I had to yank pretty hard to get it out I snapped the tip off my rod <laughs> uh, I'm useless at this eh? Uh, oh well just have to go without a tip now <laughs> uh, shocking Yeah, so not having much luck so far, not a single bite. Uh, the kind of fish that I hear you get in this river, I think you get some Murray Cod, I think you can get Golden Perch or Yellow Belly, I think it's the other name for it. Um, I think also some bass and maybe some catfish or something like that. So, but <laughs> so far, none of them want my lure. So, I might go for a little bit more of a wander around and see if we can find a bit of a better spot. <sighs> yeah, fingers crossed. Yeah, I think I might try and make my way down there. There's lots of reeds, so hopefully the fish are hiding between the reeds. Yeah, so not much luck down there either. All I seem to be pulling in is weeds. But man, just get a load of this drone, eh? It's absolutely stunning. So, if I'm going to be failing miserably anywhere, I cannot um, yeah, pick a better spot to do it. So, this place is absolutely gorgeous. Maybe we'll just put it off for, for now, and I'll get the rod back out as it gets a bit closer to sunset. With any luck, we'll, um, we'll get something then.
So I don't know if you can notice that or not, but all the ground's really turned up. Does anyone know what's doing that? Like would it be like a pig or a, a deer or something like that? Because it just doesn't always really seem as like natural. There's sort of no fallen trees around it. It's just a whole bunch of dug up dirt. So yeah, let us know if you know. All right, well, time to get this beer cold. So I'm just gonna construct a little beer wheel using this um, fallen log. Oh. Yeah, I think that should do. That shouldn't float away. All right, let's go collect some firewood. Yeah, it's so one thing to note about collecting firewood. Say you've got hollowed out logs like the one in front of me, and even this fallen over tree here is hollowed out. So they're going to provide homes for a lot of native animals. So don't be an idiot and go chopping those things up because number one, they're not going to burn very well because they're hollowed out. Number two, an animal needs it uh, for a shelter a lot more than you need it for firewood. So yeah, when you do collect firewood, just go for sort of the dense, uh, smaller timbers that aren't going to be a, any home for any animal. Also just check the regulations where you're camping because some parks um, and forests don't allow the collection of firewood and some do, so just do your research. I've had a few people ask me what kind of saw I use, and this is just a silky gomboy hand saw. I really rate it, eh? Uh, it's a really nice little saw. So if you're in the market for one, check them out. Yeah, there you go. That's my chopping board for tonight. Yeah, so I'm just going to make up a quick and simple pot hanger for the billy. Uh, I'm going to use this as the main arm, maybe chop that off there and then be able to hang the billy off that fork. All right, well, it's about quarter to four, so let's go down and give this whole fishing thing another crack. So I've just changed up the lures to one of these guys. I only bought him yesterday. Uh, the guy at the tackle shop said I should have um, good luck with this guy, so 
Let's see if he was right. Well, as the sun dips behind the ridge, even though we haven't caught any fish yet, cheers to an epic weekend. Dead set, I swear all the fish in Australia have disappeared. <laughs> I can never get a single bite. Uh, a few more casts and I think we'll call it a day. All right, well, that's a wrap. I tried my best, so there's not much more I can really do. A uh, bit of a shame, but oh well. All right, let's get back to camp and get the fire started. Uh, well, absolutely devastated couldn't get a fish to starve. I tried hard today. Seriously, I probably put in about two and a half hours worth of fishing and uh, just not even a single bite. So unless uh, someone's come before me and fished all the fish out of this uh, particular river, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Eh? <laughs> I mixed up the, um, a few guys have sort of suggested if you can't catch anything within half an hour on one lure, and just sort of mix it up to another lure. So I did that. But yeah, uh, just no luck. Eh? Tried off all different spot, like all different spots. Tried like amongst the reeds and around the rocks and then around the corner and stuff. And yeah, just no luck, eh? So absolutely, I'm um, devastated. I just <laughs> all I want to do is catch a bloody fish, eh? You think it wouldn't be that hard? But I don't know. I'm dead set. I swear the Australian rivers are just uh, fished out or something like that because I cannot seem to fun catch any. So uh, pretty frustrating. It's probably more frustrating for you guys as well, to be honest. Like, how many fishing trips have I been on this year and uh, can't even catch a single one? Absolute rookie. So, but I'm trying. I'm definitely trying. So, just uh, be patient. I'll eventually get there. Man, the day that I do finally catch a fish, I think that'll be the happiest day of my life. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, there's a whole reason I came to this spot as well because I heard the fishing was pretty good around here. So, but yeah, oh well. Can't, um, can't kick myself too hard. I gave it all I got, so anyway. Uh, I think we might get some dinner on now. Uh, tonight I've got, what have I got? I got a, oh yeah, kind of like a, a chickpea couscous kind of thing. So um, yeah, I made it a couple of times before at home and I thought I'd give it a go camping. It's a little bit fiddly, but I oh know, it's pretty tasty, so I figured I'd give it a go camping. Anyway, uh, let's get that on. All right, we'll boil up some water. Yeah, so we've just got the veggies, which is some pumpkin, uh, just some cucumber, so there's some mint in here, uh, just some spice as well. We've got the chickpeas. And yeah, we've got some halloumi as well to go on it. And the couscous. So this is pearl couscous, uh, which is, well, I think it's also called Israeli couscous as well. But yeah, it's pretty good, eh? I've only had it a few times, but I quite like it. Yeah, so we'll just chop this butternut pumpkin up into little cubes. Probably leave the skin on as well. 
So once it cooks down, the skin's fine. I have to agree, it's much better hearing the knife on a, a wooden board than on the metal plate, so. All right, so we'll just add some oil. And then here we've just got some rock and spice. Just give that all a good coat. All right, sweet, let's chuck that on the fire. Yeah, so now I'm just gonna add some vegetable stock. Then we'll add the pearl couscous. And the chickpeas as well. So I'll just bring that up to the boil again for a little bit and then I'll let it simmer. Yeah, I'm just going to use this little rock here just to create a bit of a barrier because, man, your fingers get so hot when you're trying to stir stuff, but now, it's not too bad. Oh man, that fire's roaring now. Yeah, so inside these beeswax wraps, we've got the halloumi. We'll just slice that up. We'll also slice up some of this cucumber. Lastly, we've just got some mint, so I'll just pick off the leaves. We'll just chop that up. All right, and we'll just set that aside until everything else is ready. that halloumi looking. Alright, I think we're done. Alright, so let's just combine it all together now. So I'll just put the couscous and the chick chickpea mix in with the pumpkin. And then we'll just add the cucumber. As well as the mint. Just mix that around. And top it off with the halloumi. And last but not least, a wedge of lemon. And there you have it, chickpea couscous with pumpkin, cucumber, mint, and halloumi. So if I was at home, I'd also add some uh, Greek yogurt. That definitely goes down a treat with this. And you could also substitute the halloumi and have feta instead. Oh man, that looks absolutely delicious, eh? Let's get stuck in. Oh man, I am so, so keen for this. Oh. oh my goodness, that is delicious. Oh man, this is a winner, eh? Mm. 
if you're into couscous, uh, definitely try this at home. Like I said, add some Greek yogurt, maybe use some feta. You could add some carrot or something to it as well. And Man, this is delicious. He says you can't eat like a king when you're in the bush. I reckon this is up there with one of the best tins that I've had out in the bush. This is so tasty. I was a little bit skeptical about whether I should make it this trip or not because it, it seemed pretty fiddly. I wasn't quite sure. Like Usually you're meant to cook the pumpkin and stuff in the oven and things like that. So I wasn't quite sure if it would turn out the same. But man, it's so good. Unless my expectations are just a lot lower when, when I'm out in the bush. But um, yeah, it's so, so good. All right, well, I'm going to devour this. So I might say goodnight to you guys now, and I'll catch you guys in the morning. say the early bird catches a worm well this bird caught jackal this morning yeah I got up nice and early so about quarter to seven uh, six thirty quarter to seven just before the sun came up went down and had a good fish for another hour hour and a half but zilch so pretty frustrating but oh well um, I'm just gonna get some brekkie on now uh, it's about 8 30 so it's gonna take me about seven hours to get home so I don't want to muck around too much 
um, with having a fire. Plus, it uh, actually got really windy and rained last night, so everything's kind of damp. So I'm not going to bother with the fire this morning. I'm just going to use this little mini inferno um, sort of wax wax pads. I don't know if you've seen them before. I'll, I'll show you a close up um, view in a second. But yeah, just use some of these to boil up some water and um, make hot chocolate, and then yeah, just have some muesli. So nothing too exciting for this morning, but it'll do me. All right, well, let's get that on, and then we'll um, pack up and boost out of here. Yeah, so these are the Mini Inferno from the Pathfinder store. Uh, I already used all mine up, so I actually made some new ones myself. So basically, just get some. Um, ah, let me get them apart. Just get some makeup removal pads. Uh, that cost like a dollar for 50 of them. And then you just get some uh, lighter fluids. I used Shellite in this um, instance, but I'm sure you could use heaps of different kind of lighter fluids. And then yeah, you just dip it in uh, yeah, melted wax. So yeah, so then uh, you just gotta just break them up just to try and expose some of those uh, sort of cotton fibers. So the Mini Inferno ones, I feel, from memory, I think they lasted for about five minutes per, per pad. These ones that I made probably last for maybe three minutes, so they're not as good, but um, yeah, I made about 40 in one go, so anyway, so I'll light that up. Twigs in there. Yeah, in all honesty, it's probably not the best system. Um, I find it's pretty hard to continually keep the fire going. I wouldn't mind maybe looking into getting one of those sort of twig stoves, those little foldable twig stoves. From what I've seen on YouTube, they look pretty decent. So. I just find this is a little bit fiddly. It doesn't sort of um, yeah stay light as well, so maybe it's something for me to look into. Yeah, well I think that'll do. She's not boiled, but at least she's uh, warmed up. And then just a little bit of milk powder. Yeah, it's a pretty simple brekkie, but still looks pretty good.
So yeah, everything's packed up. Uh, made sure the fire was well and truly out. Scattered the ashes and broke down the fire pit. So yeah, now it looks like no one was ever here. Leave no trace. Man, what a stunning place, eh? This is some beautiful country around here. But yeah, I think that's me all done for this trip now. Um, had a really nice time, eh? This is probably one of the best trips I've done in a while, even despite not being able to catch a fish. So yeah, really, really enjoyed it. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed it too. And uh, as always, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate all your support. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Hooroo. Thank you.